Hey y'all, it's been a minute. It's been a month. It's been some months. It's been almost half a year. I'm sorry y'all, but I'm back. This video is about medical school. So let's just go ahead and jump in it. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. And follow me on Instagram at it's.breeg. Let's go. Hey y'all, I'm back um, with a video. And I'm sorry, my air conditioner and my apartment is so loud. And I was trying to do this, uh, start this before it came on, but... Hopefully go off some. My glasses are dirty. <laughs> anyway, y'all, I am fresh out of class. Um, I had class or whatever today, so I am officially an M2, Emma Harry, and I still don't know how I feel about it. Wait, I'll take that back. I feel really good about it. Like it feels oh thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But it feels really good to have, I guess, a class under us now because I feel like we didn't did some. Like it kind of showed that like, you know, we upped it up a little. But yeah, if so I feel good. Um it feel good. I'm doing my best to stay on top of everything and ahead. And don't get behind. And like I'm trying my best not to get behind on things. We only got four units left, so we had ten units, only four units left. Um, and that's re and neuro. Come back with neuro, the endocrine. I think repro and then ooh, repro and then um, psych. So the hardest units I've heard the hardest units are behind us. So, but this neuro is kind of long, and I don't want to get behind. So like. So yeah, y'all, I've been kind of approaching this semester and hopefully it carries on throughout the year um, a little differently. But anyway, yeah, so I'm an M2. That means that this is my last year of didactics. That means that I only have this last year of like schoolwork and the next two years is gonna be um, clinical. So I'm very excited for clinical. But I did have someone, let me look. Um, I did. Oh, he posted my flyer. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, okay. This made my day. But I did have, let me see, let me see. On my last video about medical school, I know this is on my second video. So if y'all haven't watched the first video, make sure y'all watch that video. If y'all don't know what I'm talking about, y'all can also go to my playlist, Med School Chronicles. I'm trying to post a little more. But, um. Yes, so let's see. So, someone asked me how old was I when I graduated. So, Jada Garcia, 7673. I hope you don't mind me shouting you out. But, um, you did ask me some questions, and I told you I was gonna make a video and answer some of your questions. So, one question she asked was, how old was I when I graduated from undergrad? So, when I graduated from undergrad, I graduated in the spring 2017. I'm taking these glasses off. Oh, my nose ring. So, spring 2017, I was born. How old was I? I was born in 94. Um, and I think I graduated right after my birthday. Woo child, I was 23. I was 23 years old when I graduated. Undergrad, I graduated from the University of Alabama, Birmingham, UAB. Shout out to them, go Blazers. Um, then she asked what, um, or they asked what did I do? What did I go into after our graduation? After I, after graduation, God, I can't talk. Um, after I graduated, what did I do? It was, whew. What I what I replied is woo, I did a lot. I just started med school in 2022, so it's five years. I got my master's, worked as a server, and worked in the hospital. I can make a video going more into detail if you like. So yeah, so let's see if I can remember. So 2017. So when I was in high school, I started working as soon as I turned 16. Like I was raised by a single parent, my mom. So as soon as I could work, I did start working because I did like sports and things like that. And so I, I didn't want to, you know, ask her for help for anything. So I started working at a young age. So I started working at Applebee's as a hostess. And then I eventually became a server. So I st actually started undergrad at Xavier University, Zula in New Orleans. And I did um, a year and a half there. But 
when I would come home for the summer, I would go back to Applebee's and work. And then when I transfer, so I end up transferring from Xavier to back home to UAB. Moved back home after a year and a half. So spring 2014, I moved back home and I picked up that picked that job back up. So I was still working at Applebee's as a server um, while I was working. I mean, while I was at school. So I did that. And then I kind of transitioned into, while I was still in school, I kind of transitioned, I think either the latter half of my 2017 year or school year, or that summer, I think I started working at California Pizza Kitchen. So I was working at California Pizza Kitchen and Applebee's. And then, so life is all about a journey, right? So I told y'all I'm a little, y'all I'm a little older. So when, I was at California Peace. I kind of transitioned from Applebee's because I think I was making a little bit more than California Peace and the food was better and the atmosphere was better and all this stuff. Um, so I decided to try to get on at UAB Hospital. UAB Hospital is like one of the best um, hospitals in the Southeast. I went to school there and I knew like I wanted to be a doctor. Like I always knew that. But like when I graduated, I just didn't think that I was going to be able to do it. Um, my advisor, of course, they always uh, feel like you can't do it. She gave me a list of jobs for people that have biology majors, and none of them, unless you're really being a doctor or whatever, what am I going to really do with a biology major? I don't know. Maybe I'm ignorant to all that. But I was like, okay, what am I going to do? So I was like, okay, if I could get on at the hospital and start working, and I could see if I'm good at patient care, like if I even like being in that environment, right? At that time, I probably shadowed a few times, but nothing major. So I really didn't know how I would be in the clinical setting. And I also knew that I needed clinical experience, whether I want to do PA or become a physician or what have you. So I was like, okay. So honestly, like I honestly like I started out like all at the bottom, like. I started out, my grandma knew somebody, I knew somebody, I think it was a family member, that worked in the kitchen at a hospital. And so like, y'all know when y'all go to the hospital or you visit somebody that like, they stay in the hospital overnight, they get their food delivered to their room, that was me. I had, if I can find a picture, I'm gonna put it up here, but I had like the little hat, the oversized shirt, the apron, the big baggy pants, the non-slip shoes, these rickety card, like, I just felt so like, and no shame to people that, that do this job because I learned a lot doing this job, but having a bachelor's degree and knowing what I wanted to do, I was just like, dang, like, this is not what I want to do. But I knew that was going to be the way to get my foot in because it is hard to become a patient caretaker. That was my goal. So my goal was to get in there. I started working in October 2017, 2017 because I know I started working on my mama's birthday. And I was like, I'm gonna be gone from this kitchen by the end of the year, which is December. And so when I would move them cars, push that food, I would be, excuse me, um, nurse, who's your nurse manager? Who can I email? I like to work on y'all unit. Whatever unit, I was asking questions, like how to get in touch with these such and such so I can get on this unit. Cause it's easier to get to work from the inside instead of outside. So I knew I could work my magic and get in like that. Y'all, I was only making $9 an hour. I was a, it was, I was temp, like, but I still was the best cart, whatever, dietary, whatever my job title was, hostess, I, I was the best at it. I was nice to everybody. Like, I was working at the, uh, like, we was working in the basement, like with EBS, like the janitorial services that they call them, environmental services at the hospital. Like I was working with them, but I came to work, you know, grateful for a job and I came there Two missions, you know, to provide to provide good quality hospitality to the patients as well as, you know, work my way up in the hospital. Um, and at the time, when I got the job, I was still working at California Peace. I had this manager and, and I told him I was leaving. And he basically had just offered me a position as a general manager at California Pizza. But I was like, that's not my goal. That's not what I want to do. So I was like, nah. He sat me down, and I don't even want to go into detail because, you know, but he was really kind of, you know, rude about it and was like, I was a biology major and, you know, I was a biology major and, you know, I decided I didn't want to do that and stuff like that. He was basically saying, like, what am I going to do with a biology degree? Like, but I don't have to explain my 
my my plans to anybody honestly is nobody's business i may or may not have told him my goal but i knew i needed to get in that hospital and start working at the tech because that's what i want to do i want to be in patient care or so i thought right so i decided to forego the opportunity making probably double if more than what i was making as a hostess because i knew what i wanted to do um and i knew god was gonna get me there and so what i said i was gonna be out of there by the end of the year guess what i was out of the kitchen by the end of the year working as a patient care tech i literally worked my way up but pause i just want to take the time to say that even though i worked my way up i did not forget where i came from i did not forget where i started and i did not forget the people that i was working with downstairs whenever i saw them I would help them, like EVS, uh, the dietary hostesses, like I would help them, I would be nice to them, talk to them. People that I used to work with downstairs, I would try to help them get on. They would be happy to see me because, just because that's not where I wanted to be and I had a degree and all this stuff doesn't mean that I was better than anybody, it doesn't mean any of that. It just means that I knew what I wanted to do and I was taking the necessary steps to get there. But I can't stress this enough, always be kind, always be gracious always be humble to everybody because you do not you do not you do not you do not know who you're gonna need and who will be there for you because you know even little things like oh can y'all bring me up uh, some chips like <laughs> like whatever like be if y'all don't take nothing away from this video be nice be gracious give back you know reach back and help pull somebody forward like I'm never gonna forget where I came from, y'all. And now I'm in medical school. Like, I'm literally working my way up and I'm always, always, always just gonna always have a piece of what I learned from working in dietary, working alongside EVS, working as a patient care tech. Like, I'm always going to um, be grateful for that because I feel like it just made me a better person overall. Um, so then after that, I worked at this, as a tech for almost four years, y'all. Um, I started in like this ortho kind of unit and then we moved to like OCD. I think that's what OCDU, OC, Southern, I, I forgot, outpatient, critical. I forgot, worked in that unit. Um, then we moved to, then COVID hit. So at my job title is a PCT. And I was a, one of the best PCTs too, cause I would get it done. So I worked 12 hour shifts. Um, and then, wait, so I worked 12 hour shifts. So I would get to work at like 6.30, get off at seven in the morning. It's kind of becoming fuzzy to me. Worked overnight shifts. We did vital signs three times um, a night. I also did blood work. I did phlebotomy, EKGs, changed bedpans, uh, bathed people, talked to people, whatever i need to do to eat their food all this stuff that's that was my job title right um and i liked it like i liked i like taking care of patients again i want somebody to take care of my my person in the hospital you know so that's what i did always nice people you know learning what i can and then so I was like, okay i like the clinical part let's see if i can do good the school part so uab um had a master's program biomedical health sciences program in it BMH? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all forgetting stuff, y'all. So I did that. I was like, okay, if I could handle the rigor of this, then I should be okay. So basically the program was 11 months, accelerated program, and basically um, mirrored the first two years of medical school, like I said, didactic school work years. But it was accelerated, it was abbreviated, so it wasn't as in-depth, but I got a little taste of every little thing. So I graduated undergrad with a 3-2, GPA, that's why I transferred from Xavier because my GPA just wasn't good. I wasn't doing well at Xavier. Came home, was able to pull up to 3-2. I, again, I was a, um, a biology major and I minored in chemistry and theater. Fun, right? So I pulled my GPA up to 3-2. Got into this program. I also finished the program with a 3-2. Um, and both of those programs, like undergrad, I kind of started getting lazy. My master's program, I didn't go as hard as I could have, but you know, I'm here. So, when I was in my master's program, the first, I think this also affected my GPA, the first, so it started in the summer, this, the fall, this spring. So, when I first got there, I was working full-time as a tech. So, I would literally go to class. It was in person Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 
so go home, take a nap, wake up, go to work, get off Saturday morning, go home, go to sleep, wake up Sunday morning, go home, go to sleep, wake up Monday morning, take a nap in my car, then go to class and do it all over again <laughs> next week. I was doing that because if you were in school at UAB full time, um, and you, well, if you, yeah, and you work full time, they pay for your tuition. You had no choice. It came out of your whatever. But they pay for your tuition. So I did that. And then in the fall, I was like, I can't keep doing this because my GPA. So I was like, I'm just going to keep doing this until the ad drop date. Did that. So my fall semester was paid for. And then I dropped a PRN um, that's like as needed at the hospital for my summer semester. And then, um, so I had to pay for that. I think I did a loan or no, I actually paid. I don't even think I, I don't have any loans for my master's. So yeah, I think I actually paid for that. And so, um, yeah, yeah. So I dropped it. Like I said, I dropped the PR or no, I didn't drop the PR in. I, I dropped a half. I was working half time or what's it called? Part time. <laughs> I was not working part time at the hospital. Yeah. And then I might've went back up to full time at one point, but then COVID hit. So my unit turned into a COVID unit. That took a lot out of me, y'all. Like that took a lot out of me. I would drive home crying because it was just a lot mentally. I finished the program. We we left for spring break and never came back because COVID hit. Finished the program at this time. It's 2022, so 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This is five years after I graduate. Woo, 17. No, I graduated in 2020. I'm tripping. 17, 18, 19, 20. So I'm about, I thought 23, 26 at this point. And COVID hits. I'm working at the hospital. And I just couldn't do it no more, y'all. Towards the end of the year, I think I picked up another job at Shipped uh, Food Delivery Service. And that was working from home. So I was working PRN at the hospital and then it shipped. And then I eventually phased out at the hospital because I just felt like I was working a job that I didn't get appreciated for. The whole propaganda, I don't even know propaganda the right words, but they was like acting like they was doing so much for the first time workers. We got t-shirts, food and stuff like that. First of all, night shift barely got anything. We kind of got the leftovers from, from the day shift. They tried to do some stuff at night. It was cool. Pay was crappy. Um, as a tech, I was not making that much money. We was also having to do the work of EVS because EVS couldn't go on the floors. So we was also like cleaning up and taking out the trash out of the room. It was just too much for too little pay. And that ultimately took me out. And it was just like having a dawn and doff, having all your uh, PPE on and like, you can't like run in and out of rooms. You gotta like call, find a remote, call somebody, wait for me to get there, the suits are hot. It was just a lot. It was too much for me to have to like eventually phase out. So I end up taking um I end up taking the MCAT that end of that year. And I'm at like a 493. And so again, y'all started school in 2012. And so I didn't start studying. I didn't start I didn't take the MCATs almost 10 years later. And so like I had to relearn all this stuff. And I thought that like if I just learned the concepts and take the exam, I'll be okay. And that's not it. MK is not, and I could probably, I don't know if I want a video on that, but it's not only what you know on MK, you gotta know how to take that test. So then I turned around, uh, and don't forget y'all, I was still working PR in the hospital. Started my job at um, SHIP, working full time, and trying to study for an MK. So I was like, uh-uh, I gotta get at least a 500 on this MK. So the next go around, I really just started, you know, doing practice tests and everything, and then I finally, Took it again in that January, so that's 2022. Wait, 2020, I missed that cycle. This all run together, y'all. 2020, I missed, I took it, missed that cycle. And so I think I took it again in that January, but I still had to wait for the next cycle, which was, yeah. So that was 2021, so 2022, yeah. So I already have, and then I ended up taking it and submitted my application before I got my MCAT score too. So that wasn't smart. That was a waste of my money the first round. And so I didn't, I don't know about any interviews or anything. I don't know. It was just a blur. And so then I took it, got a 501. And so I was able to the next 2022 cycle, which started in 2021. 
I was able to get on it real fast because I just asked people to write the recommendation off or I got people to write the recommendation from my program. And so as soon as that stuff opened, I was sending stuff out. DO schools, MD schools, but I only applied to HBC MD schools, honestly. And so, yeah, um, now I'm here. Okay. So, yeah, uh, is that everything? Yeah, so uh, Jada Garcia, I work, I live with my mom, so I didn't have any rent. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. I think that covers everything. Um, on my journey here, so now I'm at Meharry in Nashville. I'm from Alabama, so it was, I'm only like two and a half hours away from Birmingham. But um, that was my journey here. That's what I did after school. That was. Uh, basically what I did between t spring 2017 and summer of 2022. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, about a little over five years. That's what I did. So I hope this helps not only uh, Jada Garcia. I'm, I hope I'm saying your name right. I hope it not only helps you, but anybody else. Um, again, if you don't take anything from this message, I mean, from this video, know that closed mouth don't get fed. Um, if one door closes, try, knock on another one, open it, try that. Um, always be nice, always be gracious, always be humble, always be thankful, just all that stuff. You never know who you're going to need. Um, and just keep pushing. Everybody's journey is not the same. I, I used to look at YouTube videos when I was looking at medical schools and stuff like that. And I would just get intimidated because everybody was like, oh, da, 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 da. But um, as long as you have a good balance, like I might not have the GPA, but I'm a very personal per personable person. I'm a kind person, like I told y'all. Um, had a lot of volunteer. I'm pretty sure I had strong letters of recommendation. I had a lot of clinical hours. Um, I just had a, I'm a um, non-traditional student. So wherever you lack, just make sure you have things that you know fill in that gap uh gap for a lack of better terms um because um i think it's just a good a good look to just be well-rounded more so having a stellar gpa and not having anything else i mean you'll still get accepted but like you want to be like a good physician you want to be well-rounded you want to be prepared for medical school and i don't mean just academically just and everybody doesn't have to be a non-traditional student, but I think I learned a lot on my journey here. Um, and I think it's gonna um, make for a great position if I do say so myself. So um, just keep pushing, believe in yourself. Uh, people start medical school at all ages. I started at 27, 28. Um, so I won't graduate till I'm like 32. But life continues to go on regardless so just do what you gotta do as long as you're progressing in life it's no race it's a, it's a marathon baby it, it, it takes a while um this journey is not for the faint of heart <laughs> it's very stressful that was a help me laugh but yeah it's it's cool i wouldn't trade my journey experience or you know life lessons for anything in the world um i'm grateful to be here thank you god Thank you everybody that supported me. And make sure you have a good support system too. Um, but yeah, so that's that. I just wanna hop on here real quick and do, you know, the video for her. Or keep saying her, I'm pretty sure it's her, but I just wanna make sure I use the right pronouns. But yeah, y'all. So I'm gonna continue to try to make videos throughout this year, my M2 year. <laughs> but make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Um, do what Jada did. Let me know what y'all want to um, hear or see or, you know, whatever, whatever. I got y'all. Hope this helps. Bye. <coughs>